All right, tools we need today, pretty common, um, except for the tapered punch and also a 12 mil socket with a uh, impact or something to give you a little length in there because that's what we're gonna push in the uh, bearing with. I buy most of my stuff right from here from Niagara RC in Niagara region, five by 16 by five mil. <clears throat> Pardon me. And here I'm just showing you that uh, we're not using any rubber shields today, just metal bearings. And I'm just showing you here also that you want a, a socket that matches up with the outside race of that bearing. Not really pertaining to the uh, removal or replacement of our bearing, but I had a hard time removing this pinion, so I thought I'd show you by just applying a little heat with a little torch. Uh, this, this pinion just sails right off. Um, there's a little C-clip on top. And uh, typically you can expect that when you're dealing with red Loctite as opposed to the blue. Little C-clip here and the pinion comes right off. Again, not really anything to do with the bearing, but only took a few seconds of your time. All right, let's roll. We got work to do. Grab a 1.5 mil and uh, we can remove the bell end of this motor. Again, this so, and not again, I hadn't stated yet, but this is for the Spectrum, very common in the version three Armas. And uh, you get some dirt in there and they do blow these bearings quite often. Like I said, two out of three this week, and I'll probably just do the third because it's probably packed with dirt also. So this bearing is fine. I will show you later on in the video how to get rid of it. Here's the Philly BRC way. I try to make anything as simple, stupid as possible. So I just marking this with a Sharpie marker. This way, it takes the guessing as to when I wanna put that back in there. So we have a spacer or a shim, whatever you wanna call it. Um, also, we have this washer. Now, I would say it's it's curved. It's concave in shape. So I would put the concave shape down, the curved side down when reinstalling this. Yep, sweet. So now you can just take that punch and just you'll be able to pop that rotor out. Just like that. It's important, don't set it down because you may have some debris and filings. Remember, this thing's heavily magnetized. I put it right inside of a nitro glove to ensure that you don't pick up any crap off your workbench or your table and uh, keep it nice and clean until you're ready to reinstall. All right, at this point now, you can see, I don't know if it shows very well, but I can tell you that the inner race diameter is slightly smaller than the diameter of the hole on the uh, face end of the motor. So I just take this tapered uh, punch I give her a few whacks with a hammer and just uh, beat it like it owes you money. And that might not come out completely. I get a little stuck there and I just grab a little flat. At that point, you'll be able to just pop that bearing out. Now be careful, you don't want to score the inside of the motor at that point. Now you can, I'm just showing you there's some dirt and some mud. You can clean that any which way you wish. I wouldn't spray much in there. Maybe just scrape it off a little bit. But this bearing is pooched. It won't turn whatsoever. Uh, and confident that's the reason I couldn't move it before this is a new one we're not wasting any time guys I just set that uh, new through that new bearing in there and now I'm going to use this socket with the uh, impact driver extension just to tap that in um, those pliers actually aren't necessary at this point but my table's a little rickety so I thought maybe it would solid the surface solid the surface up a bit again get the hammer back out and give it a few nice taps what I'm trying to display here shortly is that you just want to try to notice if you have a nice even gap there to ensure that it's seated properly. Give it a couple extra taps if you're not sure. Um, and the more solid the surface, the more it would be more effective it'll be. So now you could slam that rotor back in there. Again, it's going to be heavy magnetism and it should just suck right in there. Ensure that you have the flat part of the shaft out. You'll know that you're deep enough in there. And then we're gonna um, reinstall the, uh, the curved washer. Again, curved side down. Then the shim. Any time now. Yep, Sharpie side up. Again, apparently it has two different shapes. I'm not sure if one side's beveled or not, but I just chose not to go there. So here's a little tip. Um, I wanted to try this, the bread trick. So if you have uh, 
your bell end and you want to actually change this batter, this bearing. I've started a little bit already. You can see that the bearing is a little bit proud of the uh, of its seat. So cool. So I'm just shoving a little more bread in there and using the back of the rotor to displace the bearing. This is really handy because late tonight, it's late at night and I'm ready for a snack when I'm done with this. So here comes the bearing now. It's unbelievable. So cool. It works. First time I've tried that trick, to be honest. Okay, we're just putting this back together. Guys, hit like button. It's a super easy uh, modification or install. Thanks for watching and keep it real. Peace.